By now you've heard the calls for ceasefires on the Israeli-Hamas conflict. Even President Biden's getting on board. Paraphrasing here, but Hamas wants war. So if we give him war, that's what they want. Really? Well, the Germans wanted war. So we should have ceased fire with them. Just give them what they want, right? Because what they really want was to destroy everything. A ceasefire would do that. A ceasefire with Hamas would also do that. Absolutely idiotic. There's also another misconception that people currently have, which is, well, let's say we say that if Hamas doesn't get destroyed, Hezbollah joins, and then Iran joins, and Syria joins, and Iraq joins, and there's so many great people over there that are so friendly to the West, they would all join in destroying Israel. It's great. And don't worry, the U.S. is not far behind. So, whoa, but it didn't happen. Why didn't it happen? You said it was going to happen. The ceasefire happened forever, and then Hezbollah didn't suddenly join. It doesn't mean the next day. It means soon. It means the most opportune time. It means they're going to wait until the U.S. warships goes away, because China does some stupid thing, and the U.S. warship has to go there to say, Hey, China, we got warships too. What are you going to do about it? Oh, you have like five times memberships in us. Okay. Uh... Yeah, that's what they're going to wait for. They're not going to do it immediately. They're not idiots. Some of them are idiots, but some of them are really smart terrorists. They're like geniuses. It's real pity because instead of putting their geniuses to trying to kill people, if they put their genius into the actual, you know, doing good, they can change the world. But of course, terrorism comes before everything else in radical Islam. So here we are, and it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen in a month. In a year, it depends if Biden keeps on sleeping, it depends if Trump comes. Obviously, everything keeps on changing. The world keeps on changing. It's not like, well, this is going to happen. That's it. Let's just give up. Let's go to sleep. No, we can even change it even if there's a ceasefire. It'll be infinitely harder and a lot more people will die, but it can be stopped. This world war can't technically be stopped. There's no one solution to everything and then nothing else will No, Obviously, there are other solutions, but if Hamas is able to win, and by a ceasefire, it means they survived. And if they, they survived, it means they won. Then Hezbollah joins, then Iran joins, then Syria, then Iraq, then Libya, then Sudan. Should I continue? There's a lot more come. Oh yeah, there's also Yemen. Let's not forget about the the, the Houthis. Or as they, as they say in the Middle East, the Houthis. They're going to join. And they're not a really, they're not a nice bunch. I like to dance. Okay, I know they like to dance. But they're not friendly at all. They like to dance while they kill you. See, Hamas likes to do the R word while they kill you. With the Yemenites, they like to dance while they kill you. Because it's a culture of dancing. I don't understand why the Yemenite Jews also have their crazy weird dances. Which is basically like impossible to do. But, okay, back to the important thing. President Biden wants a ceasefire. He's wanted a ceasefire since day one. Actually, I don't know if you remember this, but when this massacre was happening it took around 24 hours for the mass massacre to completely stop biden had a barbecue with music while the jews were being slaughtered let's never forget this fact biden was literally on the white house lawn having a picnic with music and jews were dying and he just didn't care first time i put a statement was way after that when the massacre was actually started, well, Biden was sleeping. So don't don't interrupt Biden's sleep. President Biden's sleep is too important for, you know, the dying people. <laughs> maybe it was Shabbos for him. Maybe it was a holiday. I don't know. Maybe he suddenly turned Jewish for that few seconds. Couldn't wake up. But now it's a ceasefire. Ceasefire is very important. It took him three days to put out a coherent statement. In the meantime, Blinken and the Turkish Prime Minister, they put up, Turkish President, they put out statements calling for a ceasefire already. Bodies are still dying in Israel. Let's not forget this. Very important fact. Israeli citizens were still getting killed, and Blinken pulls out a statement that Israel should cease fire. Slow cap. Too fast. This is what they wanted from day one. They don't care about civilian lives, and spoiler alert, they don't care about your civilian lives. If you live in America, if you live in the United States, they do not care about your life. 
You are just a citizen of the country that they run. You have turned into an X or an O. Valuable, not valuable. And currently, most Americans are not valuable. You have to be a specific type of rich, affluent person in order to actually matter. Affluent Jews in Israel definitely don't matter. Let's not forget, Blinken is Jewish in the most physical sense of the word. Spiritually is basically zero, but he is Jewish, but he doesn't actually care about Jewish people. Uh, long COVID is terrible. So people are dying in Israel and he's just like, Israel should cease fire, they're doing too much. So what changed? Nothing changed. If Israel cease fires, then Hamas keeps on going and killing, and killing civilians. Why are we surprised when Joe Biden calls for a ceasefire? He did it while the civilians were dying. He's doing it now. He doesn't care about the guys and civilians. If it was up to Joe Biden and there were no consequences, I promise you he would nuke them. Israel wouldn't nuke them. They had one person, one person in the government mention the word nukes, to mention the word atom, an atom bomb, and it was in a context where he was joking. He made a joke when he said that, and the entire Israel erupted at him and said, we are not doing this. Why? Well, because basically in Jewish law, that's not allowed. So everyone is like, sorry, we can't do that because Jewish law prohibits that. Actually, the Israel, the Israeli military, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, is actually run based, the rules of engagement are based on the rules of the Bible, the Old Testament, the Jewish law. And obviously they also have to conform to international standards, but it goes above and beyond that because of the, it's basically a bunch of Jews. And so they have to uphold every single Jewish law when it comes to fighting wars. And that means that they have to go to extra length. There's specific guidelines in Jewish law that says what you have to have and have not do. And a lot of it does mirror the international guidelines of war because, well, they try to make it as just as they can, as they think they can. And while well, Jewish law goes a little bit above and beyond that, that's why they, they, they create paths for civilians to go even while the war is happening. No one in the world, history of the world has ever done that, right? There's many different things. There's a lot of different like laws you have to pass and that's why there's no revenge killings with Israel right if Israel wanted a revenge kill it could just drop a bunch of bombs and just destroy everyone killing 15,000 people is so small people don't even get how little that is it's really sad but it's such a small number it's absolutely insane when you think about how everyone says it's so densely populated to only kill 14,000 people on the absolute highest end is is absolutely insane but joe biden wants all this to end hamas is joe biden's friends let's not forget the hamas caucus is joe biden's friends there's the, those eight to ten um congresswomen or said i don't even know what they are. no one cares about them but they're well they're they're loud that's why we care because they keep on shouting in everyone's face um, but they support hamas and they support joe biden so joe biden needs them for some stupid reason well i know why but no one wants to say this it's a whole nother video it has to do with the winning in in losing you can win and what as long as you do that you're fine like Gavin Newsom he's been losing every debate possible because his 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 state has basically declined so much it's an absolute apocalyptic hell hell, hell show, right but he's been able to win because he gets certain wins he's gonna have a debate with DeSantis right and he's going to lose the debate single-handedly. He's going to get destroyed. Because why? Because you look at California. California's a wreck. You look at San Francisco. San Francisco is a wreck. You look at Florida, right? The different cities in Florida are beautiful. They're flourishing. Everyone's going to Florida. So even with the hurricanes, people are still going to Florida. So how does he get elected? How does Gavin Newsom get elected? The well, answer is he wins specific wins. For example, he wins in the ESG stuff, in the in the diversity stuff. And that's enough to get him reelected over and over and over. That's the same thing with Joe Biden. Joe Biden cannot get elected on anything. The economy is worse than his predecessor. It's actually worse than it was. I don't even know how long. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible economy, right? Everything, wars. There are wars being fought all over the world. It wasn't like that before. Um, what, what I don't know what other, what, what else people, people say the border <laughs> don't get me started on the border i've made a lot of videos about that the border is absolutely terrible so joe biden cannot get elected on normal things 
because in normal things he would lose single-handedly he would lose by probably 90 percent if he just ran on his actions if he ran on his actions joe biden would lose 90 percent of the vote and the other 10 percent will probably stay home but so he can't do that so what does he do instead he runs on listen i did a b c d e f and g and all of those are acronyms for whatever it's called the first letter for random diversity stuff that i've done and so if you're not black if you're, you don't vote for Biden, you're not black, right? He's the black. Guy. If you want, if you're black, you gotta vote for Joe Biden, or your life is gonna be ruined, right? You're probably gonna die. Police are gonna shoot you, right? Um, there's a bunch of I don't even want to go through his his politics, but like student loan debt, right? He's he's he paid back the student loan. He's the one that did it. He gave you the money. You saw that. You felt the check. It went into your account. It was great. Thank you. It went into your account. It's it's awesome. You feel it, right? Did that do anything? No. It ruined the economy even more? Yes. What do you do with that money? You definitely didn't pay back your student loans, right? You just, well, now I'm just going to spend money on random stuff. I'm going to go to a concert. I'm just going to, you know, it, it, none of that money actually matters. None of the money goes to where it actually matters. Where, where does the money actually should go? It should go to working class families to support them, but it doesn't. It goes to more affluent individuals who took out insane amount of debt to get stupid jobs. When you can get like a, a course for three hundred dollars from Google and then make sixty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars a year, hmm, which one's better? I don't know. Anyways, back to the thing that I was talking about. Joe Biden wants a ceasefire, which is great, because it shows how stupid he is. And you know what? Netanyahu, Bibi Netanyahu, Israel, Israel's prime minister, might actually acquiesce to Joe Biden's demand. That will mean the end of his career forever. He will be absolutely shunned in Israeli politics. There'll be a new president, the new prime minister that will come, and that prime minister will go and destroy Hamas. It might be not be, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be in five years, but at some point, Israel will go in, destroy Hamas, destroy Hezbollah, clean up places in Syria, clean up places in Iraq, clean up places in Yemen. If that happens today, not that many more civilians have to die, but if all these terrorist groups are able to rebuild up their defenses and rebuild up their bunkers and Israel has to start over from zero 14,000 more Palestinian civilians at minimum will have to die but not just that because Hamas will have figured out this is the first time Israel has ever done this to this to go they'll be figure out ways to get around this how the, the, the bunker bombers won't be as effective and even more civilians will die. So when Joe Biden calls for a ceasefire, what he's saying is, I really want more Palestinians to die so I can get reelected. Because I need the Hamas caucus to yell, the Hamas squad to yell and scream about how Joe Biden is so good and he clicks all the boxes and he checks all the marks and he got the wins that he's supposed to get in order to win. Who really cares about the Palestinians? Elon Musk, when he, when he, you know, he visited what happened and said, Okay, maybe we have to start, you know, deprogramming these kids to stop wanting to become murderers. Maybe we want to build up Gaza. All smart things. He cares about Palestinian civilians. Joe Biden does not. Blinken does not. Almost any politician that you know does not care about Palestinian civilians. Even lots of Palestinian activists do not care about Palestinian civilians. And the only way to keep them alive, keep them safe, keep them healthy, keep them wealthy, and keep them on a path will not change them into murderers is to completely eradicate Hamas without a ceasefire, unconditional surrender, absolute destroy Hamas. And that's where we are today. And it probably won't happen because our politicians are a bunch of P-words. Bye.